So, <clears throat> one of the things that normally the practice I just start and, um, and not talk, but one of the things I wanted to talk about, which is something that happens every day, is, um, is every time I set up to write, I have to change the position of the phone. Now, you don't see this. What you see is the phone at the correct angle. You don't realize that when I sit down, I have to get into the right position. And every day, the position is ever so slightly different. So I have to make sure that the phone is lined up with the paper and that I'm sitting in the right place in order to allow the lettering to happen. Now, now that I'm talking to you and the page is in front of me, so I'm going to move the phone into the cradle to, to do the live. Um, I, I've also, now that I'm sitting here, I also realized that once I put the phone in, I'm probably going to have to move the phone and the page again because the position I was in just now, my body's a little bit more relaxed. So every time you sit down to practice, you have to be conscious of, is the page facing the right direction? Am I sitting in the right place? Am I sitting in the right direction? Obviously, I'm not expecting you to, you know, to sit down and um, film everything. But every single time you sit down to practice, hi, Raphael, every single time you sit down to practice, you have to adjust your position. And um, the other thing you'll notice is your handhold starts to change. And as your handhold starts to change, you have to become more aware of how that then affects where the page is. So in the manual, I discuss something called placement. And the placement is where the page sits on the table in relation to the edge of the table and to you. Okay, so I'm gonna swap this around and uh, get started with the next group. Um, I'm, I'm going to be away uh, from tomorrow, so I'm not going to do any posts about the groups until uh, the 3rd of January. So have a super Christmas.
So um, we've looked at a number of things here. So here I have, um, obviously, I, obviously I start with the line of universal beauty and connective stroke, working out the relationship. And so obviously the problem here is I've gone swung underneath, whereas I've just stopped just under the turn. So that's, that's, a, big, that's a big problem that a lot of people don't really take into consideration. If you use the swing to then bounce back up, chances are you're going to swing too far and then it's the same thing on the top part of the stroke. So once I got that going, I then started to look at the S, look at the widths, look at the, you saw me doing the elliptical movement exercise to get that movement going. And then slowly and slowly slowing down until I can manage the nib on the page. Because obviously the movement of the nib in the air, ghosting the shape in the air. You, you can't produce that kind of shape here. It works for Spencerian, but it doesn't work for copper plate script in the same way. Um, and this shows you the relationship of the two different S's. Um, and as you can see, there's, there's always a lot of geometry embedded in the structure. So always look beyond what you, you think you can see. Um, here, they're different L's. Obviously, this is more elliptical. This is closer to a circle, this is more of a circle. And you can see how much more beautiful this shape feels, whereas this shape is quite sort of clunky. Um, because remember, copper blade script is based on ellipses, um, not circles. So if you make circles, then you have a problem. And for those of you who are saying, oh, but I always think of an oval. Most people, when they think of an oval, think of an egg. If your letter forms are looking like an egg, you clearly have a problem. Um, the next thing to consider is the internal volume. What does the volume look like? Now, if we look at this L, we can see this curves here and this curves there. So we have opposing concave and convex curves. So we have to be conscious of how does that internal volume work. I generally put the, the dollop serif on the end of the L to line up with the, the loop here. These are a letter most people have trouble with. So in my D structure, I make this bit a sixth over the line of universal beauty, and I make the foot a sixth over the curve. So this balances this by the size of the foot. And I know lots of people say to me, oh, I don't like my Ds this narrow. I don't like the foot this long, but the alternative is producing a rounder letter with a bigger bowl, um, and that then changes the base structure for the entire script. So you really have to be conscious of this. Now, I've looked at um, other historical sources of Ds which are more Roman-based, a mixture of Roman, more classically Roman than, obviously, copper blade script is. Um, but these are not the easiest letters to work with. Now, I also did a reversed D, this is very typical of lettering done in the uh, 18th century. And it's really important to understand how a reverse letter is done because you're starting at the point where you finish. It requires you to understand the letter and to know the letter really well and to understand the balance of the letter. Um, normally, I would only attempt these after about 10 pages of this. Um, and there is a study group starting on Facebook in the PS Scribe Calligraphy Classes group. Telmo and I have um, changed the structure of the group. So none of the, none of the material posted in the group you can see anymore unless you've joined. Uh, I know that the reverse D Sarah is astonishing. There's some really, really good examples in, uh, in Bickham. Um, where's my Bickham? It's just here. See if I can find it. So we've changed the permission, so obviously you can't share anything. If you want to see the stuff in the group, you need to join the group. Um, next year, we're starting a concerted practice group in the Facebook PS Scribe Calligraphy Classes group. Um, there you go. Uh, 
Oh, where's that D? Oh, here it is. It's just up there. Sorry, you're seeing it in reverse. Um, yeah, the reverse D in reverse. So in order to join the group, you obviously need to join the, the concerted classes study group. You obviously need to join the PS scribe classes group. Um, we will start posting information on what's happening. On what's happening. Um, sorry, nearly sneezed there. What's happening with the group, when it's going to start, what tools and materials you'll need. We'll, we'll let you know more about this next year. Um, there's been a lot of interest in the group. And the point is to practice accurately and correctly. So there'll be a lot of homework set for you. You'll need to, you'll be expected to post homework. Obviously you'll get some crit on the work. Um, don't expect me to be nice because, you know, obviously you're there to learn. You're not there for me to tell you it's looking good. Um, you're there for me to tell you what the problems are. Um, if you don't like criticism, don't join the group. Hey Tashi, the classes in, uh, in uh, Venice look great. So Tashi Manox is a very good friend of mine. He's an absolutely spectacular uh, Tibetan calligrapher and does some amazing artwork. So do follow him. Um, so I will post a little bit of this on Instagram. Um, after today, I am not going to be posting until the 3rd. I might post a couple of things on holiday, but I did promise Tim that I will not be taking any brush pens or any pens at all. Um, because I do actually need a break from the writing um, and I have some other very, very exciting news to share with you next year once I get some more information on that, on, well, on all those other things. So um, thank you all very much for a really, really wonderful year. Thank you all for following. Thank you for joining in the lives. Um, I know I have a tendency to waffle on a little bit. Um, and do join the PS Grab Calligraphy Classes group. It's in the bio. Um, so it makes it easier for you to get there. If you are interested in joining the concerted study group, please reply to the associated post in the group because I'm not going to hunt you down in the group to ask you to join. Once we start the group, you are not allowed to join it until we start the next round, which is probably three or four months later. Right, so have a great day. Um, those of you who are finishing up work, yay, finish work. Uh, those of you who are um, not finishing up work, have a good day. Um, for those of you whose day is ending, have a good evening. Uh, have a great Christmas and have a wonderful New Year. Super.